I'm Alex Michelson. Welcome to The Issue Is. This week, perhaps the most interesting man in Southern California. Dr. Patrick Soon Xiong is the new owner of the LA Times, one of the top cancer researchers in the world, a co-owner of the Lakers, but best of all, he's a guest on The Issue Is. Plus, Justice Kavanaugh, the perilous politics of the Supreme Court, and this. We should set about resetting the moral compass of this country. Former Vice President Joe Biden in town endorsing local Democrats in the country's tightest races. We talk about all of that with our panel. LA Unified Vice President Nick Melvoin, comedian Rod Mann, and attorney Anahita Setagatvar. The issue is starts right now. Joining us now is one of the wealthiest, most successful, most influential, and most interesting people in all of Southern California, Patrick Soon Xiong, new owner of the LA Times, one of the top cancer scientists in the world, a co-owner of the Lakers, and that's just in his spare time. <laughs> he joins us now. Welcome to The Issue Is. Thank you for having me. Um, so you're doing all these different projects, but let's begin by talking about the LA Times. You're uh, about 100 days in, a little bit more than that at this point. Uh, we know that you've moved the facility from downtown LA to El Segundo, but for the the average reader out there, what is the difference in the times? What is the difference that they are seeing already and that they're going to see now that you're in charge? Well, one of the first things we've done, not only moved, but we've actually started recruiting some of the best talent. And is part of that more local coverage? Both local, national, and international. Look, I think uh, we first need to own California. We need to actually understand not only Los Angeles and California, which is the window to the future. And from there on, you know, we'll, we'll take on the, the rest of the, of the, both Asia, Mexico, Canada. And what we're looking at now is, is uh, the new facility uh, that's being built in, in El Segundo. So uh, talk to us about, some people might say, it's kind of crazy right now to get into the newspaper business. They see it as a dying business. I know you think that there's a lot of space for innovation. Where do you see journalism going? Look, without journalism, we're not a democracy. I really feel that strongly about it. I came from apartheid South Africa. We really need to have an institution that actually is not just a check and balance, but an informed, truthful uh, voice on behalf of the people. So you're right, it is a tough time because of what you call a newspaper. But at the end of the day, we storytellers of truth. And if we could then find not just a paper distribution, but a podcast, a video, a short form, live streaming, over the top networks like we're doing even here. So I think of us as Los, you know, Los Angeles Times Media Group more than a newspaper. Uh, you uh, have described uh, the fake news as a cancer on society. You're not only attacking the cancer that is fake news, you're also attacking cancer itself. <laughs> you're one of the top researchers on that. That's a pretty complicated issue. Can you explain in a real basic way the work that you're doing on cancer and how it can help people out there that are watching? Well, this is the challenge that I've been fighting with 25 years of my life, that as a biologist, a scientist, an engineer, uh, that sadly, I believe, we've been treating cancer wrongly. Uh, and that the idea is we've got to trick the tumor. So my first invention, which is called Abraxane, I invented a protein nanoparticle to feed the tumor, feed the tumor a drug called Paclitaxel, like rat poison, and kill it. That drug now got approved for breast cancer, lung cancer, and pancreatic cancer. But that wasn't enough. I believe that you and I have an immune system that protects us today from cancer. And it's crazy, therefore, for us to wipe out the immune system of a patient with cancer. Mm. Now, that doesn't sound logical. So we've been working very diligently to activate your own immune system in the process while you have cancer and let your immune system get reactivated and find the tumor. And so what's the status of that? The status of that, believe it or not, we are in late stage clinical trials um, and this, in November I'll be presenting for the first time the data for bladder cancer, lung cancer, pancreatic cancer, triple negative breast cancer, head and neck cancer. What we must not do, and this is what I've been fighting against, and I get it, it's controversial when it comes to my colleagues, we cannot and should not be giving high-dose chemotherapy. We cannot and should not be giving high-dose radiation. Yeah. I believe that is, in fact, a fundamental cause of wiping out the rest of the immune system and maybe inadvertently, sadly, making it worse mm. than what it is. Wouldn't it be interesting if years later we look at that and think, 
oh my God, what were we doing? Like you look at some bloodletting or other things from other eras that, that maybe exactly. you look back with suspicion. Okay, well, like if curing cancer wasn't enough, <laughs> you're also trying to work on some of the world's energy problems. And uh, you just had recently a major announcement when it comes to zinc air batteries. What does that really mean? And how does that help people? Again, it's the same theme. I'm using the human biology. God gave us this, what you and I are walking around. This is the most complex machines. You and I actually have zinc as the machine that's actually driving the cells. A child cannot be born in prenatal without zinc. Zinc is needed for insulin. So when we looked at zinc, zinc is what Edison literally, a hundred years ago, tried to make as a rechargeable battery mm. and failed. So if in fact you can actually break the code and figure out how zinc works and you just use oxygen and the sun and zinc, complete nature, and make it rechargeable, you will have actually broken the code and zinc then becomes the next lithium. So you found a way to make zinc air batteries cheaper, uh, which means it could really help people, especially in third world countries, right? Correct. Uh, and essentially help power them in places where they don't have power right now. Correct. That's very exciting. Um, now that's the big world problems, but the thing right. that most people in LA really care about is the Lakers, <laughs> right? <laughs> you're also a co-owner of the Lakers, October and you're 20th. bringing LeBron back, right? right? LeBron is here, we've seen him, uh, now uh, playing for the team, he looks great in the jersey, uh, you've hung out with him, he's come and played basketball at your house. Uh, how does uh, LeBron change the equation? What do you make of, of LeBron being here? Well, as I said the last time we talked, right, I think LeBron will definitely change his franchise. He doesn't need to prove anything. He's, he is he's a world-class player. He's going to bring not only maturity but strength and, uh, to the younger players that we have. And next year uh, when we have our cap all freed, um, Genie and Magic will do the magic again. And I think um, this franchise is really on the upswing. So are we going to get Kevin Durant? Are we going to get Clay Thompson? Are we going to get Kawhi Leonard? What are, what's going to happen next year? I don't want to get into trouble, so I'll say... <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking big, because you, you don't think small, it sounds like. But and by the way, so he comes and plays basketball at your house. How does your shot compare to LeBron's? Not even... <laughs> close. <laughs> Not close. Okay. We do something on this show called Personal Issues, where we get to know you a little bit better. We've talked big issues, uh, but now we want to talk sort of a little bit more about you. So we're going to put 30 seconds on our clock, and uh, here we go. Um, we're going to ask you about your favorite book. Well, sadly, it's not something that many people read, but it's The Hunt for the, for the Virus, which is a, is a medical book. So. Okay. <laughs> First concert you've ever went to? Actually, they... Um, Bird back racks, one of these. All girls. right. <laughs> uh, favorite meal? Mainly wonton soup. Okay. <laughs> favorite movie? Boy, that's a hard one. Uh, the good or bad and ugly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nicely said. And last question, one piece of advice to everybody out there about being successful. Well, I think truly when I say, come, you know, follow your passion, and I know this sounds trite, do the right thing, just simple life. Just do the right thing, figure out what is the right thing to do. Um, and following your passion, doing the right thing really brings you, I believe, success. Well, um, one way I think you've really done the right thing is bringing LeBron back to the Lakers. And you know, the song that plays whenever Le the Lakers win is Randy Newman's I Love L.A. So as we end this segment, we got a little I Love L.A. to celebrate all the future Lakers win, thanks to you. Uh, and thanks for all the work you've done. Really appreciate You're it. You're welcome. But by the way, Genie and Magic brought LeBron, but I didn't do that. Okay. <laughs> all right. You're just ending cancer. Uh, so we'll take credit for that. <laughs> and also hopefully saving journalism. <laughs> Patrick Sun Chong. Well, thank you, We'll be back with more of The Issue Is right after this. Like this song? Uh, this is I Love Ellie? Yeah. Here it comes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's especially when you win this one. Some new music from Sean Mendez and Zed on this busy Friday news night. Let's welcome in our panelists this week, Nick Melboin, the vice president of the Los Angeles Unified School District. Nick is a proud Democrat who was elected in 2017 to help lead the nation's second largest school district. Anahita Sedagatfar is an attorney for the Cochran Firm in Los Angeles. I got the name right. She frequently appears as a commentator on TV, including on the Fox News Channel. And our returning champion, is Rod Mann, 
He was the winner of Lost Last Comic Standing on NBC. <laughs> Rod will be appearing at the Ice House at the end of October. Welcome to you all. The big story of the week, the big story really of this year, is Brett Kavanaugh looking like he is going to be confirmed as the next Supreme Court justice after all that bitter fight. Still looks like he's going to get the votes. Where does America go from here, Anahita? We are so divided. I mean, this country has never been this divided. And I can tell you that as an attorney who specializes in sexual assault and sexual harassment cases, it is disgusting to me that the issue of sexual assault has become so politicized as we saw happen here. So all I can say is I hope moving forward that's not going to be the case with other victims of sexual assault and harassment. Nick? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think if we look at this confirmation, it's going to be 51, 49. I mean, look at Justice Ginsburg. That was 96 votes in support of her, despite partisan divide. So, you know, my hope, we have more women running for Congress than ever before, more women than men. And my hope is that, you know, following this Black Friday for the next 30 days until November 6, we have women come out and let the country, let their senators know that this is unacceptable. Assault isn't a partisan issue, but also his demeanor, his temperament. Uh, he's a partisan hack. And even before the allegations that came forward, the very credible, extremely believable uh, allegations by Dr. Ford, we have tens of thousands of pages of documents from the Bush White House that he never divulged. Uh, it, and it really, I mean, his conspiracy theories around the Clintons, it's just he's not fit for the Those are fair, That's fair game to talk about, though. But when you're talking about sexual assault, and the Democrats and Republicans, in my opinion, are both guilty of this. They have politicized this. This was not about a search for the truth. I think, yes, the Democrats did delay. Feinstein could have released this before and kept her anonymous. And the Republicans could have said, look, let's do an investigation. Let's not rush this through just so we can get our candidate on the bench. And that is insulting to me as a woman. Rod? Oh, man. You, you, I just say trust. We're dealing with trust, man. You can't uh, trust a dude who say he drunk a keg and never tried to tongue kiss somebody, because I have. <laughs> <laughs> Justice John Paul Stevens, who was on the Supreme Court yes. for years, mm -hmm. said that he doesn't have the temperament to go right. on the court. Uh, Rod, what do you think about that? Well, the temperament is, you seen within the trial how he was, you know, a little belligerent. I always feel bad for the spouse. The spouse <laughs> has to sit back there and look look like, ah, oh, he do drink a little bit, but she can't really say that because then it'll go all wrong. Cause, but I, so I think the spouse should be out of it. But no, I just think Kavanaugh, he's going to get he's gonna get approved. But I just think he, he's like that. You know when you go to the grocery store and they have that bread? that uh, be on special, is the manager special and it be in the corner by the employee's interest. He's kind of like that now. He, he's not fresh no more, so it's kind of he's been exposed. And, and so he's still going to be able to do his job. Well, let's talk about I, temperament. Look, I'm an attorney, and I agree that temperament is very important for a yes. judge, obviously. But you can also look at it like from his perspective. You have to sympathize with him. Maybe he is saying, look, I'm wrongfully accused. I'm going to get emotional. I'm here defending my family, myself. But at the same time, yes, temperament is important. I think what's more important is to look at his history on the bench. You know, he's had many years on the bench. No one's ever raised any issues with his temperament. So that issue, I'm going to disagree with you guys on a oh, little bit. This oh, is, he's oh. being accused of a very uh, oh, serious oh, crime yeah, here. Yeah, last yeah. word, uh, is, is he expired bread? Well, no, well, all I want to say <laughs> is I think the, the double standard on this play, just imagine if Dr. Ford acted half as belligerently as he did to the, to the, uh, the panel that was in that. I mean, who in this country can be angry and who can't? And I think if any woman, if any person of color showed half that anger to that committee, we would be saying, oh, that's a belligerent, hysterical person who has no place on the highest court. When we come back, we're going to talk about what's going on in Congress. It once was unthinkable where there'll be a blue wave in Orange County. Joe Biden thinks so. We're going to hear from him next. Oh, my God. It's by <laughs> red. Red. Yeah, it's just by red. Red. Yeah. 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 Like okay. special. Election Day here in California is November 6th, and Democrats targeting a series of SoCal congressional districts currently held by Republicans. We've got some new polling from UC Berkeley this week that shows those races. 30-year incumbent Republican Dana Rohrabacher tied in his race against Harley Ruda in Orange County. In the 39th district, Gil Cisneros, the Democrat, in one point ahead of Young Kim, the Republican. In Northern LA County, Katie Hill at 50% against Steve Knight, the current Republican congressman there. Democrats Katie Porter, Mike Levin also ahead. So this week, Vice President Joe Biden stopped in Fullerton to campaign for many of those candidates. He's really trying to nationalize this race. Take a listen. America knows who Donald Trump is. The question for all of us is, who are we? 
Back with our panel now, Nick Melvoin, Anahita Setagafar, and Rod Mann. Nick, I'll begin with you. He's trying to nationalize it, make Trump an issue. Is that going to work? I think it will in Southern California, especially after the Kavanaugh confirmation. We have congressional districts throughout the state, and especially SoCal, that Hillary won. The demographics are, are shifting, and I think, as we were just discussing, we have women who are coming out in higher numbers who are going to say, enough is enough. Uh, we already have a sexual assaulter in the White House, now on the Supreme Court, and this is the way that the House is the check against this administration. Rod, you travel the country, yes, sir. Uh, and you say there, there's a very different feeling in a lot of different places. I mean, if you go to certain places around the uh, country, south, uh, some place in the Midwest, there are some people who think America is doing great. But you stay here, you say, oh, this is all bad. So we got to, like my mama say, we got to, we can't boo, we got to go vote. Because if, if, you, if you don't like what's going on, we, we got the paperwork on Trump. We know that's, that's not a good deal. Yeah, we want to send that back. You know, how you, you, you don't even want to buy the warranty. You want to say, no, nah, nah, I don't want no warranty. So, well, <laughs> so not yeah, 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 yeah. So, but yeah, so, so, but women, so let's not we just forget, get though. Let's not, let's, make it, let's not take it lightly. Women yeah. are an important voting block. Yes. And mm -hmm. the question really is going, to be, is going to be, is this a referendum on Trump? Not just the California midterms, but throughout the nation. And now with Kavanaugh, you have to ask, are women going to feel alienated? The counter to that is, if you're a Republican, look at all the stuff that he's delivering. He right. delivered two different Supreme Court nominees. He's delivered a really strong economy. Aren't you happy? Don't you want to reward President yes. Trump for what he's doing? The base is happy, certainly, but women still. We're in a Me Too era right now. Let's not forget. Women are concerned about these issues. Likelihood. I think the other story the Democrats have to tell is that Trump, even for his Republican base, have been great for Californians. This tax bill singled out California to hurt taxpayers here. There was no fire relief the way there, the way there should have been. Uh, his anti-immigrant rhetoric, and I do think the change in demographics are going to help. This can't just be a referendum on what's happening in Washington, but California, we still have a housing crisis. Uh, we have a gas tax that's on the ballot to build, rebuild our infrastructure. So it's got to be more about local issues. But it's and not, the Democrats though. Have but the it's not. Issue. If you look at some of these ads in California, they're not campaigning on, this is my issue, this is what I care about. They're campaigning on, Trump is horrible, let's, let's vote for Democrats, let's take over the House. I think that's what the common theme is going to be. I just say, <laughs> I think as a, as a black man, I just think it's a, a referendum on white men. Or you agree with and me? You, how about that? It's a referendum on power. I mean, white men. How are white men doing? I mean, white men. You got the record. That's what I'm, I'm saying. So this, but all I'll say let, is that you got to let every, diversity. You got to let everybody in, and then you got. It's just like cooking soup. You got to put different ingredients in it, man. And, and that's the problem. It's like white dudes have been running things, and it's just a referendum on. Hey, man. It's time to let some other faces and places and ideas get in the room and have opinions. And, that's how, and, and white men having a problem with that situation. And the only irony there is a lot of these Democrats who are running are white men. And right. so I think that, that's no, it, right? No, but it's idea, <laughs> idea, idea, I, I, I like you, Nick. You're a good white dude. Yeah. We had a great no, no, talk, not. and we have learned. We read the Jewish Journal together. We did, actually. <laughs> I think so we got a new subscriber. Yeah. 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 We can all come together yeah. over the Jewish yeah. Journal. There you go. All right. Yes. <laughs> a reminder. The tribe. Uh, Thank you. A reminder that our show is available as a podcast. Just search for The Issue Is. Speaking of all of that, up next, the politics of Kanye West. Is he really helping the president? Stay with us. He's in the second place. <laughs> <laughs> we were laughing at the whole thing. Oh like, no people, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. it's all the They bullied me backstage. They said, don't go out there with that hat on. They bullied me backstage. They bullied me. Kanye West closed out the premiere of Saturday Night Live wearing a Make America Great Again hat, earning boos from the crowd. He criticized the cast for their portrayal of President Trump and again hinted that he could run for president in 2024. Back with our panel, Nick Melvoy and Anahita Setagatfar, Rod Mann. So big question of the week. We're well, not really the big question of the week, but a question of the week. Uh, is Kanye West helping or hurting President Trump, Rod? I mean, Kanye West is a rapper and a producer. And that's what I take him as, a rapper and a producer. He's not, he, that's, that's, that's just all for bring light to Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, but no. I think he's helping because some people would say that the way Kanye has been treated since he's, you know, said he supports Trump is really the reason why Donald Trump got elected. People are attacking him. They're threatening him. They're bullying him. That is not what our country is about. Yeah, because Trump is really the, the arbiter of great 
political discourse. But I, I think that he, he, I actually do agree that he might be helping because I think this conspiracy theory you heard on SNL, conspiracy theory about Democrats pulling black men out of homes for welfare. The, the Trump voter likes those conspiracy theories and thinks, to your point, that that's why <laughs> like, we had to elect the uh, self-made man that is Donald Trump. So Kanye says that he wants to run for president. Who do you think is a better presidential candidate, Kanye West or Donald Trump? Um, I, I'm going to have to go with actually Kanye West because I can't say that anybody would be worse than that. You know. that's, that's a tough one. I mean, I have to plead the fifth on that. At this point in time, neither I go with Alan and say no. You do get Kim Kardashian in the White House. Yeah. Well, a lot of people might like that. Well, a lot of yeah. men might like that. Well, all right. Well, that is down. all for yeah. this week. I'm Ellis Michelson. Have a good night and a great weekend. And most importantly, go Dodgers. Go Braves! What are you talking about, man? Go Braves! I want to hear the whole show. I know, but I got to represent my people. I got to represent my people.